Ukraine. <laughs> Does he got enough charge? Yeah. Might not get plugged in. Here we got plugged in. Plugged in. Plugged in. Plugged in. Plugged in. Plugged in.
everyone, it is Sunday and we are live right here on Facebook for our online worship experience. Welcome to Reignite Church, virtually that is, as we gather together online this morning to praise and worship our Heavenly Father together. Thank you so much for joining from wherever you're watching from this morning. We want you to know that we miss you, each and every one of you. We wish we could all be gathered together, but as a church, we continue to pray over the safety and the health of our church family and of our visitors. So for now, we will remain online virtual for our worship services. But COVID will not keep us from worshiping. So do me a favor, turn to the person next to you and remind them that the building is not the church. We are the church. Go ahead, y'all. The, the building, building is, is not, the, not church. the church. We are, we are the church. church. Amen. Amen. Well, if this is your first time with us this morning, we want to extend a special welcome to you. We are Reignite Church, and we are a church that is on a mission. And our mission is to reignite love for God through an authentic worship experience, love for community through our regroups, and love for all through serving. If you'd like to learn more about our church, visit our website at www.reignitechurch.org. We are excited to be in the Christmas season and to be bringing you week two of our brand new series that Pastor Marshall is calling, He is Risen. If you are ready to receive the word of God this morning, can we get a shout of amen in this place? Amen. Yes, yes. But first, a couple quick announcements. We want to thank everyone for supporting our Christmas outreach. We've been notified of an additional family that is in need of a blessing this season. And so now as a church, we are blessing five different families this holiday season. And we could not do it without each and every one of you. So thank you so much for your support. And lastly, a reminder, we will be conducting a virtual Christmas Eve candlelight service on Facebook Live Christmas Eve at 630. So be sure to invite your family and friends. Go online to the Facebook page for the church. See the event. Share it on your Facebook wall. Let's invite everybody to join in because there is no better way to ring in Christmas than to be gathered together and celebrating the reason for the season. And that is Jesus Christ. So if you don't mind, wherever you are this morning standing with me, we're going to open up service with prayer. I'm going to invite the praise team to join me up here. Let's go ahead and open up service with prayer. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for this moment and for this time. We are gathered together as your church, Lord, to glorify and honor your name. Be in the midst of our service here in this place, as well as in the individual sanctuaries of every person at home or wherever they're watching or listening from this morning, Lord God. You know the needs of your people. We pray that the message that you place on our pastor's heart to share with us this morning is going to be uplifting and encouraging and to help his, your people through that word, Lord God, to just be a change, a new and a different person, Lord God. Allow us to leave this place better than we were when we showed up, Lord God. Yes. We pray over your word this morning. We pray over your people. Lord, be in the midst of our worship experience and we pray that we glorify and honor your name. We love you so much, Lord God, and we do this all for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Amen. I know my own sheep and they know me. Yes. Just as my father knows me and I know the father. Yeah. So I sacrifice my life for my sheep. Mm -hmm. Praise God that he knows us. Everything yes. about us and he still calls us his own. <laughs> oh he still God. laid down his life for us, me and you, his sheep. Yes. So that we can be forgiven and receive eternal life. Yes. Thank you, Father, for knowing our names. Yes. Each Thank one you. of us. Yes, for Lord. loving Thank us, you. walking with us, keeping us, protecting yes. us, and calling us your own. Yes. Yes. We sing this song in honor of you today and every day of our lives. Amen. Join us this morning as we sing, You Know My Name. Amen. Let's go. Come on now. Come on now. Come on.
Oh my goodness. Wow. Family, it is so good to be before you guys again. Somebody needed that word right there. If you needed that word, put I needed that in the chat right now. Right now, we're going to wait on you. If you needed that word, put I needed that in the chat right now. I'm so glad that we have anointed and talented praise singers who will bring and usher us into the spirit of God. Right now, family, we are excited. We are at the home on location live at the beautiful Jim and Rose Carlberg's home. Right. They invited the team yeah. in. Yeah. So we're switching it up this month. We are here with the Carlbergs and we're praising God right here in this virtual space. Yes. I'm so glad you're with us. Thank you for your attention and your attendance yes. this morning. God has a word for you. So we want to thank the Carlbergs. We want to thank yes. God for what yes. he's done for us yes. and all he's going to do today. Is your heart filled? Yes. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready for Christmas? Yes. We want to thank God for what he's done and what he's going to do. We are in week two of our series. We are calling He is with us. Would you say in the chat, He is with us? Now, I'm not talking about family. I'm not talking about He is with us. Ooh, in a spooky way. I'm saying he, he, is, he is with us. He is the God of Christmas. Right. He is with us every day, every day, all day. Yes. And we are thankful that we can talk about him this month. God is with us. Yeah. In fact, because we needed a Christmas experience and, and also a human experience, Jesus was <laughs> born. Right. The text says, our, our foundational text says in Matthew 123, it highlights the fact that God himself came down to be with you and me. Mm -hmm. Yes, he came down to be with you and me, and me. This is what it says. It says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God, God, is, with us. God is with us. The problem of this is. There's a problem. Yeah. The problem with this, we don't always believe or recognize this truth that God is with us. Yeah. Ah, let me help you with that. Sometimes it's easy, Tiff, to believe that God is with you when everything is going good. That's right. It's Amen. easy, Jim, to believe that God is with us when the family's fine. Yep. Rose, it's easy to believe that God is with us when we're healthier than ever. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's easy, Ed, to believe that God is with us when everybody likes you, Anthony. <laughs> it's easy to believe that when things are good it's easy to believe that God is with us that he's present he's a present help it's easy to believe that God is with us and with you when you and God have a thing going on that you feel like mm -hmm. yeah but this Christmas I want to consider I want to consider all the ways that God is with us I want to consider the ways that are not so, that are antithetical to the good ways, mm. the ways that are not so spiritual, the ways that doesn't seem so um, preferable. Mm. Yeah. Last week we said that God was with us, Martine, in the valley. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Over the next few moments, this is what I want to do. Over the next few moments, I want us to consider the way that God is with us today. Yeah. Today, I would like to Speak for a few moments about the wilderness. Mm. Say in the chat, God is with us in the wilderness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's not also just with us in the valleys. You know, we walk through the valleys. He's also with us in the wilderness seasons. So a wilderness can be defined as a tough time. Mm. A wilderness can be defined as a tough time. It's a place of wandering. Mm -hmm. And it's also a place of wandering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let me help you. Let me paint the picture. And, and we're, we're wondering and we're wondering how long would this last? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the definition, if I can give you a definition, I'm going to give you some holy help. And, and sometimes 2020 seems like, 2020 has seemed like a wilderness season, hasn't yes, it? Yes, <clears throat> 2020 has been something else. It, it has felt like a lot of wandering and a lot of wondering. Yes. But here's the definition for us, for us today. A wilderness season is a place where deliverance is necessary, but delayed. Mm -hmm. Wow. My gosh, my gosh, my gosh. Let me get that back to you again. A wilderness season is a 
place where deliverance is necessary but delayed. The difference between the valley and the wilderness is one lasts longer than the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Shannon, we, we walk through a valley, yes. Yes. but we wander from the window to the wall. <laughs> we wander. We wander in the wilderness. I said, we walk through a valley. We're in, we're in and out of a valley. I had to get that off me. <laughs> but we'll walk. We'll, we'll wander. We'll wander in the wilderness. Lord, help me. You know what you called. <laughs> we have to use the whole experience that we bring to the table when God calls us. So Amen. the wilderness isn't what we think, family. It isn't what we think. It's not mom and pop's camping trip where there's lush green foliage. Mm. Not a biblical wilderness. A biblical wilderness was a desert place. It's a yeah. desolate place. Yeah. It's a place where, where it's dry. Yeah. It's a place where wild animals just come up. Mm. It's a place where snakes, all kinds of snakes are even in the sand. You can't mm. see them. You just walk across and you get bit mm. in this kind of wilderness. Yeah. It's a place of unexpected attack. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a place where we're tempted and we have spiritual attacks mm. coming at us. Mm. <sighs> but a wilderness experience always follows a mountaintop mm. experience. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So usually we're on the mountain. And everything's going good, and we're like, oh, God, you're with me, and praise God for this, and That's right. praise God for that. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. the valley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a wilderness happens. Mm-hmm. Usually after a successful time, yeah. you got the job, then you got to deal with an cr- incredible employee. Mm-hmm. The wilderness usually follows a mountaintop experience. Sure does. Ah, ah, I'm going to give you some help for that. There are only two ways you enter a wilderness, Anthony, two ways. Two ways. We either run to it or we are led to it. I'm going to help you with that. I, I, it's a place we run to. It's a place of escape. It's a place where, where God calls us and yet yet, yet we, we think that we can do it our own way and we run to it as a place of escape. Jonah is an example of this. Mm-hmm. When God wanted to use Jonah to speak to Nineveh, yeah. J- uh, Jonah runs the other way in the opposite direction to escape. Until God had to get his attention. Mm. You know, you can't run from God. Mm. Somebody needs to know that. You can't run from God. What God has for you is for you. And his assignments are necessary. That's right. So it's a place we run to. Maybe somebody has seen the pressure of a project. The pressure of a project. God has assigned you something bigger than you. God has assigned you people that overwhelms you maybe. It's a wilderness. It's yeah. a wilderness experience. It's something that you're not comfortable with. And it's easy just to run away from it, but you are the person. You are the man or the woman yeah. that's, is, that's assigned that's by right. God for the project. You yes. can get it done. Yes. Because God knows our giftings. Yes. That's right. The wilderness, secondly, I told you, is also a place we're led to by God. Mm-hmm. We're led to by God. And it's a place of proving. It's a place of testing where God wants to prove your mettle. It's a place that you go to when you're, when you're not ready. God sends you into a wilderness season <clears throat> to prepare you for what he has next. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Jesus started his earthly ministry. And how did he start his earthly ministry, Mia? Mama Mia? He started his earthly ministry after John baptized him. You know, he had to be baptized to start his ministry. John baptized him, his cousin, he baptized him, and then the Bible says that he's led for 40 days and 40 nights mm-hmm. into what? The wilderness. The wilderness. The wilderness. <laughs> it's a place yeah. that you're led to also by God. So Jesus is led 40 days and 40 nights into the wilderness as a proving, as a proving gar- a ground to himself and his humanity yeah. that he is, he is ready to save the world. Pastor, what do you mean? Jesus didn't need to be proved. I believe that before he went to the cross, wasn't he praying? Yes. Wasn't he praying? Father, take this cup from me. Yes. If there's any other way, could you send Marshall or Ed or Jim? Could you send somebody else? Yep. But nevertheless, not my will, your will, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I think Jesus was concerned. He had, he had to have a wilderness experience as he started his ministry on earth. When you're led into a wilderness season, by, when you're led by God, it's easy to feel alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you're led into the wilderness season, it's easy to feel denied. Mm-hmm. When you're led into a wilderness season, it's easy to feel delayed. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That I'm supposed to be further ahead by now. I should have the degree by now. I should have this kind of job by now. Yep. I should be home by now. Yep. I, I shouldn't. My my parent. I should be over my parents' situation by now. Mm-hmm. But your Bible says, your Bible says, that even Jesus was led by God into a wilderness. I want to argue that if Jesus had to be led into a wilderness, guess what? You're going to have to be led also into a wilderness season to be tested, to see what you're really, to, 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 show, to show you what you really have, the God that you really have on the inside of you and what God wants to do for you. But have, have you ever felt like you were alone, you were denied, your mission was delayed, have you ever felt like that? Am I the only one? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because you're in the wilderness season. I, I, I felt all three of those things. Yeah. At, at one time, <laughs> at one time or another, I felt all three of those things. But you're never alone. You're never denied. And you're never delayed when it comes to God's ultimate assignment. Right. God is still working behind the scenes yeah. to get you to the place of purpose. That's right. And we have to understand that everybody at some point feels the dilemma of a wilderness yes. delay. Mm-hmm. Everybody feels... The dilemma of a wilderness delay. Mm -hmm. And so, it's okay to wonder, when is it going to be my time? When is it going to be my time? You've tried to have a child, and there's still no baby. Mm -hmm. I want to say relax and keep on trying. There's a blessing in trying. Keep on trying. Or, or, Or you're ready for the right person. But the on, only the wrong ones are available. Huh. Mm. Uh, am I telling truth right yeah, now? <laughs> Somebody put truth in the chat. That's right. yeah, mm-hmm. you, you apply for the job that you really want, but they haven't even responded back yet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Delayed. Delayed. You prayed about something, but it's been months, and it seems like there's still no answer. God is taking his sweet time. Because oftentimes... Our walks in the wilderness last longer than our trips through the valley. Mm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But family, delays are not denials. That's right. Somebody needs to put that in the chat. Wherever you're watching in your virtual space right now this morning, as I'm coming from the Colbert's house, I need you to put in the chat, delays are not denials. Mm -hmm. Because delays have the benefit of another day. Yeah. Delays have a benefit of another day. A wilderness season is a place where deliverance is necessary, but delayed. Because of COVID-19, athletes know this. And you sports fans know this. We're learning that you can delay a good game today and hope to play another day. Mm -hmm. Or, or, if I say or, or, or you could play a bad game Today, and it will be bad forever. Mm. Yes. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys know that. <laughs> all delays, I'm just trying to prove to you, all delays are not bad. Right. Okay, okay. Did y'all feel that? I, y'all, I don't think y'all felt that one. Um, right now, right now, we were hoping to be uh, making some ground in our new building. We we're hoping to have a building at least sited. Yeah. And, and, and that's going to come. That's going to come. All, for all of you watching who are like, Pastor, when are we going to start meeting together? And when, you know, one, we're waiting on the government, you know, with the pandemic. We are in a pandemic. And two, we're waiting on God to direct. That's I right. don't want to force the situation, yeah. but we're waiting for God to direct. But it's coming. Yeah. Maybe in the spring as things clear up, we'll be able to, to make some moves or whatever. But anyway, that's for free. Um, but... We've, we've been in a situation right now where we're praying for a building and, and, and we're having more time to plan than I expected. More time to plan. And I, I have in my mind, when we get the building, we're going to have a place that's convenient for the kids, yet safe. Mm-hmm. It's going to be beautiful when the guests walk in. It, it may not be what you expect, but it's going to be what God has in mind. Yeah. When guests come in, guests are going to feel comfortable to come into this place. And, and be greeted and loved, mm-hmm. and they're going to come as they are. Yes, that's right. <sighs> and we're going to have it set up strategically for however we're going to do outreach 
for the community because we'll always do outreach. Mm -hmm. If a church is birthed and yet the community never knew it was there, if it had to close its doors, then you should have never been birthed. That's mm -hmm. right. So Come we're going to always do some kind of outreach. Mm -hmm. But for now, family, all that is delayed. Yes. But the delay isn't denial. Mm -hmm. It's just a wilderness season. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a time that God has led all of us. He's ushered all of us into a, a place of planning and yes. preparation yep. 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 for what's to come at the end of the road. Yeah. Amen. Because some delays, Jay, some delays are just detours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm glad, Anthony, I wore my Letterman jacket today, but I'm glad, if I can take y'all back to high school, I'm glad when I first saw this girl over here, that God delayed us connecting and getting married right out of high school. I'm glad that he sent me off into the Navy when I saw you in high school, that I didn't go off to college, because who knows Who knows what I would have happened when I was playing ball and stuck with that. But he sent me to the Navy to play ball for the Navy and, and different opportunities that way. And I, I'm so glad that he delayed yes. our marriage, mm -hmm. because I would have messed it up. Mm. I'm not saying you. I would have messed it up. I truly believe some delays are just detours. That's right. Directed by God to get you to the purpose That's right. that He has at the end. Yep. So there's an old testament, there's an old testament <clears throat> example, excuse me, of this I want to share with you. And it's found in the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, we'll see the benefit in Exodus 13, we'll see the benefit of a wilderness delay. Yes, we'll see the benefit of a wilderness delay. The Exodus, God's people were led by God uh, to go to the promised land. However, not to, be, uh, not to have, feel the force of the fight from the Philistines, God took him not the shortest route, but a longer route. Mm. He detoured them. The promised land, Canaan, was, was ahead, and they could get there just by going a few days' journey. But God said, no, no, no. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to delay. I'm going to detour you. And I'm going to show you why in just a moment. If you'll meet me in Exodus, <clears throat> in Exodus 13, verse 17 through 18, the NLT says it this way. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philistine territory even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. The shortest route. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. That was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, get this, this blew me away. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and run to Egypt. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Woo! In other words, in Kevin Hart's voice, God was saying, they are not ready. Yes. <laughs> They're not ready. Yep. So God led them in a roundabout way. I like the NLT. Mm -hmm. He led them in a roundabout way. Have you ever done some things in a roundabout way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our faith is in a roundabout way. You know, it's, it's not what it should. Be. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. That's why I hold it. That's for January when we say lose the weight. Mm -hmm. Lose the weight is coming in January. Stay tuned. Verse 18, so God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. Ready for battle. It's okay to be ready. It's okay to be ready. It's okay to be ready. But they weren't ready to fight. But they looked the part. Mm -hmm. They looked the part. Are you ready for what God has for you? Yes. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Yes. In there. My, my pastor used to say, are you sure, sure? Are you sure, sure? <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, we, we know as mothers, <clears throat> as expected mothers, we're, we know that when, when we're expecting baby, when we're expecting baby, we have nine months to get ready. 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 Yeah. Yeah, 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 he's blessed you with the seed, and yes, you can have the baby right then and there if you wanted you to, right. but he gives you nine months. Yes. To get ready. Okay, moms. Mom's listening. Mom's listening. Hey, mom. Come here. Come here. If God was to allow your child to get sick, how 
How many of us are doing whatever we can? We're gathering meds. We're thinking about, do I need to bathe, put them in the cold, cold water? Um, I got the medicine. I got dad on standby. I, I got all this stuff to get ready when a child is sick. Yep. That's right. yep. We know what it means to get ready. Mm-hmm. Growing up, when things were tight financially, <laughs> growing up when things were tight financially, I had a grandma that was a part of our life. She was the spiritual leader of our family, actually. My grandma was. But when things were fi- uh, tight financially, we would hang out at grandma's house a lot and eat, mm-hmm. right? And so grandma had a way of always being ready. She would buy things, you know, when we would come and hang out with grandma or stay with her for the summer, grandma would get large bags of beans, mm. large bags of rice. She would go to this meat market and she would get all kinds of meat, meat that I didn't even know what it was. You know, I, I've never seen bacon that comes in chunks. <laughs> you know, big chunks of bacon that she has to cut and everything. And one day after, after hanging with grandma, because I'm a grandma's boy, um, I, I asked grandma at the meat market, I was like, well, what, what is this kind of meat and everything for? Why, why do you get all this stuff? Why do you buy extra everything? And guess what she told me? She said, baby, I always want to be ready. Ready. Yep. I always want to be ready. It's good to be ready, but God also knows when we're not ready. That's right. Yes, <laughs> oh my God. So I want to give us three ways to get us ready this morning. I want to give us three ways to get us ready this morning. And I need someone to assist me in the chat. I need somebody to assist me in the chat. And I need you to put these ways down right now. Here we go. Here's my first point. When God leads you into a wilderness, let God fight your battles. Yeah, let God fight your battles. No one can protect you like God can. Yep. No one can protect you like God can. He can he's, he's got the best protection plans. Yes. He's better than Flo. Yes. <laughs> you know, Flo will catch a ball going to your car. Yes. <laughs> Flo will stop the rain with the umbrella. <laughs> but God is better than Flo. He's, he's better right. than progressive. That's right. Amen. Verse 17 says, When Pharaoh let the people go, God didn't take them the shortest route Mm -hmm. because they were not ready to fight the Philistines. So God will protect you from what you're not ready for. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because there are some battles we think we can handle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, they seemed in their relationship, they seemed like a blessing. And you thought they were a battle buddy. What is a battle buddy? All military listening knows that a battle buddy, Jay, is a person that's supposed to come alongside and help you fight. Mm -hmm. That's what a battle buddy does. A battle buddy comes alongside and they help you fight. Whatever's on the left or the right, I got what's on the left, you got what's on the right. That's right. A battle buddy comes along. And some people we have assigned to our lives thinking that they were battle buddies. But we have a long history of abuse in this country Mm -hmm. where we think that we're fighting alongside and sometimes the Battle comes right in our lap, Mm -hmm. comes back to us because we think we can handle. We think we're ready to make decisions that God hasn't led us to make the decisions to do. And sometimes we hurt ourselves in the process. My daughter Jasmine was having a conversation with her mother one day and she said this. She said, sometimes we are the reason for the why in our lives, not God. Did y'all, just, wow. did y'all hear what I just said? Yep. Sometimes we are the reason for the why in our lives, not God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which leads me to my next point. Are you taking notes? Yep. Okay. Okay. Here we go. When God leads you into a wilderness, number two, don't let, deny, don't let delays change your mind. Mm. Mm, that's good. Don't that's let right. delays Change your mind. The text told us that God took them the longest route because they weren't ready, but because if they came across the Philistines, the Philistines, they would have to fight and they weren't ready to fight. Mm. They weren't ready to fight. So verse 18 shows us that God's delays are just pivots, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Oh, if if you're a sports fan, you know what this is. I'm I'm a spiritual coach, so I like to use sports analogies. Mm -hmm. God's delays are just Detours, mm-hmm. they're just pivots. 
What is a pivot? A pivot is a basketball term. It's a term when you get the ball and, and, and before you go anywhere, you have to have one foot stationary. Yeah. Your one foot has to be stationary, but yet you can go in any direction yeah. that you want to go. You got the ball. The attack is coming. The defense is coming to you. But, we, we, but when you pivot, you can go in the opposite direction before you dribble the ball. It's an offensive term. Mm. God's delays sometimes are detours and sometimes they're pivots. Mm -hmm. He pivots you to go into another Ooh. direction sometimes. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, man. So God will fight our battles, but God will leave you to fight from changing your mind mm -hmm. and going in another direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody say pivot. pivot. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. People change their minds about God all the time, though. Right. They change their minds all the time. Yeah. They stop following God because someone else did. Mm -hmm. yep. You're not. They're not going to church, so I'm not going to church. Come on. We right. came to the church because they came, right. and so because they're not going, because they're not logging on, I'm not logging on. Wow. Yep. Come on. Right. You're gonna stand before God with that. That's, That's right. right. Come on. Don't come to God, mm -hmm. and you can't do anything for God. If you're just coming with the wrong motive. Yeah. Yeah. Because one day, one day our works, right. the Bible says, will be tried by fire. That's was right. it pure? What was the motive behind it? It'll be tried by fire. Fire purifies everything. That's for free. Yes. People change their mind about God all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's because someone else did. Mm -hmm. They stopped following God because a prayer wasn't answered. Wow. So they stopped following. Mm -hmm. God doesn't hear me. They don't consider the fact that God's, from God's perspective, he's saying, you're not helping me. Mm. Oh, man, I'm not trying to put you down. I'm trying to pick you up. That's right. But people stop following God all the time. That's yeah. right. They stop following because a relationship ended. So they stop following. I thought this was real. I thought what I saw was real. I thought what I saw was genuine. I thought you were the real deal in their lives, God. Because that ended, you let that deteriorate, that fell away. I'm going to stop following you. I give up my faith. People yeah. stopped following God because the relationship ended. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God's fault. It was their fault. Yeah. That's right. mm -hmm. It's never his fault. They stopped following God because he took his time. Because he took his time. God has the right to do whatever he wants, yep. right. whenever he wants, yes. right. and whatever he chooses to do, right. believe me, trust me, yes. it's always going to be right on time. Have you ever had some prayers delayed yep. only to look back and say, man, I'm glad I didn't get what I wanted there. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad that he didn't answer that prayer. I'm glad I didn't get that house. Hmm. I'm glad he didn't give me that loan. I'm glad that, oh, I didn't date her. <laughs> oh. I know some people, Tiff, I'm glad I didn't connect with. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm glad that God takes his time. I want to help those that are experiencing the pivot mm. in your life. And God's saying, go in another direction, go in another right direction. It's just a pivot. <laughs> we live in a culture. I'm not naive. I know we live in a culture that's obsessed with time. Uh, obsessed with saving time. Everything's about saving time. We have, we have devices on our phones that in the minute we want information, we can just click a few things and boom, we can find out what's going on in France. We can find out what the weather is at the end of the week. We can find information in a moment's notice. In fact, I found this interesting thing on my smartphone. My smartphone said that, you know, it helped me to find out that I can, I can change the voice of Siri and so all I have to, instead of clicking on something, all you got to do is say, hey, Siri. And my phone will speak up, but now she's Australian. She's Aussie. <laughs> so I, I can say, hey, Siri, what's the weather like tomorrow? Marshall, the weather is like. Because <laughs> Siri is Australian now. True story. <laughs> she's an Aussie Siri on my phone now. Some of you are saying, man, I can do that. <laughs> Male or female, you can change Siri's voice. I don't know what Siri's voice is if it's a, a guy. I hope not. Sir, it's on the Siri. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Siri. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me stop. Let me stop. Nobody will say it. But because we're all obsessed with saving time, nobody will say this. But sometimes 
And we feel that when God takes his time, it seems like his ways are often wasteful when he takes his time. We don't want to say that to him, though, right? Mm -hmm. When God takes his time, is he wasting time? Because life is short, Shannon. Why are you waiting, God? You need to save the world. You need to help us do better. Why are we, why are we wasting time? Why, why, God? Why? We're wandering. We're wandering. We're wandering. Why is he wasting time? When we sense delays in our lives, the detours of our lives, the pivots of our lives, remember that some delays are detours mm. directed to accomplish God's purpose. That's right. So remember, <clears throat> God's not slow. His eternal purposes will come to pass. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that everything that he plans to do will come to pass. And listen to this. If you want to be smarter than the fifth grader, Exodus 13, 20. Meet me there. Meet me there. Exodus 13, 20. I'm going to begin. I'm going to continue where we, where we left off. Exodus 13, 20 says, your Bible says, the Israelites left Sukkoth and camped at Ethan on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went ahead of them and he guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and he provided light at the at, at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from its place from in front of the people. So when God leads you into a wilderness, number one, let God fight your battles. Number two, don't let delays change your mind. And here's my third point. And I'm going to let us go with this. When God leads you into a wilderness, allow him to guide your steps. Allow him to guide your steps. Our text says that God led his people day and night by a pillar of cloud and by a pillar of fire. They could see the cloud during the day. At night, he lit up the sky with a pillar of fire. So by day and by night, it was without excuse that God was present. Mm -hmm. He was before them, right? Mm -hmm. This is called, if I could teach right here, this <clears throat> is called a theophany. A theophany was a physical inspirational moment. It's, it's, it's a form of physical inspiration where, where they would see God in the cloud in the morning. They would see God through the fire at night as he liked the way. So however God wants to help us, I'm open to that. Amen. Whatever he wants to do. Your Bible is a physical form of inspiration. Yeah. You know, you don't see God. He's inside of us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. But your Bible, the NLT, the ESV, the NASB, however you want to come at it, the NIV, however you want to look at it, King James, the Bible is a physical form of inspiration. When God is leading someone to tell you something, if it's God led, if the word that's spoken, they're a physical representation yeah. of inspiration. Yeah, that's right. So God is still leading. He's still leading in miraculous ways. I'd rather be in the wilderness with God than anywhere without, else without him. Mm, amen. Because all things are possible with God. That's he can right. use whatever he wants. Right. All things. With, that, with, with God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. The fact that I'm possible is even in the, the word yes. means that God can do anything he wants to do. Everything is possible with him. Yes. Amen. There's a quote I read that says, when God is all you have, then what you have is all you need. That's right. Let me give that back to you again. When God is all you have, then what you have is all you need. That's right. My gosh. My gosh. You don't need the pastor present? No. You don't need your best Christian friend present? No. You don't have to walk around with your headphones on, listening uh -huh. to the scripture, being all holy and acting yes. like you're no good to the people on earth. Wow. Because none of us are perfect. We're all being perfected. But if God is all you have, yeah. then what you have is all you need. Yes. Yes. Amen. But it wouldn't be Christmas if I didn't give you this. <laughs> our text tells us, as we close, our text tells us that God guides us by protecting us from our enemies. Mm -hmm. By pivoting us towards places of assurance, mm -hmm. towards places of assurance, and by providing inspired moments, um, by in, 
by providing inspired moments of movement as he guides us. Yeah, did you eat that? Protecting, pivoting, and providing. So 2020 could have looked a whole lot worse mm -hmm. than what it does. Yeah. Could have looked a whole lot worse. But God was with us. Mm -hmm. Some people have lost some family, some friends due to the pandemic. But God is still with them, even in their comfort yes. and needs of comfort. That's God right. is still with them. Yes. Some people are now looking at things that I can do better, that I can appreciate more yes. mm -hmm. yes. because of the pandemic. Yes. God is still with us. 2020 has maybe seemed like a wilderness to many of us. But we can still say that God is with us. That's right. That's right. Because every time you turn on your light, that means God is with you. He's providing somebody a means of income. So God is still with you. Whenever you sit your hips down at the table to eat, that means that God is still with you. Someone's getting some kind of income to feed your family. God is still with us. Whether you're working from home or you're having to travel back and forth and you're, you're just praying that you don't get sick. Yeah. It's evidence that is evident that God is with you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This sermon is for those who felt like I've almost changed my mind. Mm. Mm. I've almost changed my mind. This happened this year, and mm. I've almost changed my mind. And so God has taken you the long route. Mm -hmm. He's taken you the long route to what he has at the end for you. Mm. But he hasn't forgotten you. That's right. Yeah. You just have to keep on walking. That's right. yeah. You just have to keep on walking. Whatever it is, he said, the Bible says that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Forsake us. So this is what I want you to know. Keep on walking. Yes. Whatever you're going through, keep on walking. Keep walking. God will not, will not forget that he's found you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he will not forget that you have a future. Yes. Keep on walking. In fact, whenever God leads you on a path, it must be God that leads you off of the path. That's, mm. that's right. Yep. My gosh, my God. Pastor, Amen. preach! Come on. Amen. <laughs> so when God leads you on a path, it must be God that leads you off of it. And so you may be in this a little bit longer because you're not in control. Yes. yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you might have thought that, you know, by, by now, Lord, it's, it's Christmas. By now, at the end of the year, we got a vaccine. By now, this should be over. But God's in control. That's right. right. By God's in control. L let who's in control control things. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you just keep on walking. Yes. <laughs> you just keep on walking. That's right. Walk it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you this and we're out of here. We're done. I'm going to let the call birds have their home back. Mm. Tiffany and I were led by God to start walking in our neighborhood. We just live right around the corner. We're good friends with them. We just live right around the corner. We started walking. God led us to do that. We started walking a couple of weeks ago to be a little healthier. And so we started walking in. The other day, Tiff said, I think it was Tuesday, Tiff said, hey, babe, let's go for a walk. This day, I didn't want to sit on my rower and do a little rowing. I didn't want to walk, Ed. But I went. 50 minutes later, in SpongeBob's voice, 50 minutes later, <laughs> on our walk, I see some kids outside playing. I didn't want to walk, my team, but I'm walking. I see some kids outside playing. They're playing catch football, Anthony. And so on the walk, I stop. And I run up to one of the kids. They're probably like 14, little scrawny, little fast kids. I run up to one of the kids, you know, not to scare them. I was like, hey, man. I got my shades on. I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to guard you. I'm going to go out for a pass. And he was like, oh, oh okay, sir, okay. So I guard him, and I, I, I D him up, and, and, and he takes off, and I start backpedaling. He breaks to the right, and I break to the right to cover him. And then he sprinted past me, and my hips, my <laughs> My feet didn't get the message as I turned <laughs> turn my hips to follow him for the pass. And he catches the pass, and I catch the asphalt. Oh, my God. Oh. And I, I fall to the ground, and I tumble a couple times, but then I bounce back up. And I'm laughing. The kids are laughing. Well, I'm like, sir, are you okay? I'm like, I'm okay, but I'm embarrassed. <laughs> but I'm embarrassed because I'm 50 trying to cover 40, mm -hmm. uh, 14. <laughs> well, I'm 50 plus. <laughs> <laughs> trying to cover these kids. So I'm embarrassed. And then it dawned on me, Tiff kept walking. <laughs> so, I had to, so I had to run up and catch her. I had to run up to catch her. <laughs> and I did my best because God didn't tell her to stop. Mm -hmm. This was my thing. This was in my head. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to live out something. 
God didn't tell her to stop. And that's how it is when we're walking with God. Yeah. When we're walking with God, sometimes we have other ideas of when it should be over or when it's best to stop. Yes. And God's saying, mm -mm. keep on walking. Yeah. Keep on walking. Keep on walking. But right before we got home, we were led. We were led to loop around our block one more time, one more again. So we loop around one more time. Again, I didn't feel like it. By now, I'm limping. <laughs> I'm hurting. I'm checking out my hand, my, sc <laughs> my scarred up knees, on my pants, on my, on my, on my, my, my sweat. I'm limping, but I agree. We need to go ahead and cool down, loop around this one little loop. But I'm glad we did. I'm glad we were led to do that. Because as we are looping around to cool off, we see some kids riding to us, out of breath, just hoofing it on their bikes, riding to us. They, they stop in front of us. And they're like, sir, sir. And I realized these are the same kids that I met earlier. And they're like, sir, sir, are these your keys? Oh. And he hands me my keys. And I was like, yes, these are my keys. I, I didn't realize they were gone. I didn't know what I had lost. Mm. Mm. Mama. Mm. And so I thanked the kids. And then I thanked God. I was like, man, thank you. Thank you for my keys. Mm. I appreciate you tracking me down. He said, we thought we'd just keep going and we'd find you. Mm. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Whatever you're walking through, family, you might be limping today. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you, you might be hurting today. You might not feel the same as you felt in your 20s. Whatever it is that you're, you're going through, keep on walking yes. with God. Mm -hmm. You may even want to stop. But keep on walking with God. You may not know it. Here's what I came to give you. This is my gift to you. You may not know it, but your blessing will be at the end of your walk. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. That's right. Your blessing will be at the end of your walk. Amen. Did you forget your keys? Mm -hmm. You lost something. Mm -hmm. You lost something when you stopped. You lost something. Mm -hmm. Family, keep on walking with God. Right. And just know, look around your home. Look around at your friends. Look around at the, at the little health you do have. And know that God is still with you this Christmas. Right. 2020 may look like a wilderness, but God is still with you right. Amen. this Christmas. Amen. If you receive it, say, I receive it. I receive I'm going to ask the praise team to come back. I want to do something. Because God... <laughs> Is going to hold your hand. He's going to walk with you. And I want y'all to know. I know this is on the fly. Y'all didn't prepare for this. But I want you. To, I want them to come. I want them to hear. I want them to hear and feel what God has for them right now. And I want them to know that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And I want you to know that if you'll keep walking with God, God will keep walking with you. And God will bless you. He will help you. He will, he will comfort you. He will speak to you. He will lead you. He will tell you when to stop. But if you can catch back up to him, he'll tell you that there's a reward at the end of the walk. There's a reward at the end of the walk. We're going to go back to, he knows my name. He knows my name. <clears throat> and we're gonna, I want you to listen to the words. I'm going to give them some time to get it on, on the fly. But I just feel inspired to do this. I heard the song earlier and I was like, <clears throat> ah, this speaks to where we are. I want you to know, if you listen to these songs, let the Holy Spirit minister to you. And then we're closing it with this song. Okay? Is that okay? Yep. Are y'all ready? Yep. I know y'all didn't pray, y'all didn't plan on this, but listen to you, Pastor. Yep. Hey, praise team. Let's get it. Let's, Let's get go. it. He knows your name and listen how he'll walk with you. He'll walk with you. That's right. Sing, y'all.
that was for somebody. Somebody needed that replay. That wasn't planned, but somebody needed to, re to be reminded that God will walk with you. You're going through a wilderness season perhaps right now. 2020 has seemed like a place of desolate, desperation, and deserted mm -hmm. place in your lives. But God is going to walk with you. And That's we want right. you to know that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. Yeah. Hey, I'm Amen. excited for what God is going to do in your life and in our lives. Yeah. And next week, we are going to be on location somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned to find out what God has in store for us. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to, in about 10 minutes, we're going to shift gears. And the kids are going to come on live at 1130. Reignite mm -hmm. Kids Worship is going to begin there. Please go on with your, with your kiddos and sit, sit and watch what God is going to do in their lives right. as we worship together Amen. through that worship experience. I want to thank you for being with us today. If you've, if you've liked what you saw, if you worshiped with us in this yes. worship experience, I want to invite you to invite a friend. Tell somebody. Yep. Tell some, just because you're at home doesn't mean you can't tell somebody That's else. Right. That's right. Tell somebody to log on. And get a blessing from God. We're going to preach, pray, and we're going to sing our <clears> hearts <throat> out. And we're going to pour it all on this, in this virtual space for you to connect with God. And yes. so it'll feel like a, a, like a real experience for you. Yeah. Right. We, want to know, we want you to know that you can continue to give. We want to thank you for your gifts. We are, playing, we are praying and planning to help families. I think it's five this yep. This is up to, they up to Annie at Princess Anne Middle. <laughs> we have five families to bless now. One family said, oh, okay. They forgot about me, so we're going to bless them, <laughs> and, and we're going to make sure they have a meal, and we're going to take care of the wish list. Some of you have already volunteered to adopt a family, Martine right. has told me, and, and Rose has told me, mm -hmm. that because they're heading it up. I want to thank you guys for doing that. I want to thank you, church, for giving so yes. we can yeah. bless in our outreach. We're buying food. We're getting gifts for, for families. I want to thank you. We're always going to be on a mission for God to That's be right. able to do something. Yes. So you can go online, and you can give at our website. Um, you'll find a giving tab at reignitechurch.org. There's a giving tab there. You can text to give to our church app. And um, 